Okay, and I guess we're live here now. Uh, this is the first uh, Hangout that SEO Pros is doing. It's called SEO Pros Helpline. So anybody who's got a question, uh, put her here in the comments on YouTube or in our uh, uh, on our page, which is uh, SEO Pros on uh, Google+. And today I'm honored to have Deborah and Brent Rankin. Uh, they're the people that are going to be basically our experts today on link building. And then we have the usual crew of uh, Aaron and Steve and Wiss and uh, George. And I guess Doc's here now, too. So we got Doc Sheldon on board. Okay, folks. So uh, we'll be starting this now and start with... Uh, uh, talking about link building in 2013. Uh, I spoke to both uh, Deborah and uh, uh, Brent beforehand and talking about some of the things that we used to do and some of the things that we don't know do now. And one of the things that uh, we all kind of agreed on is there's not a lot of consensus, and this doesn't happen in our industry very often, that there's not a lot of consensus about what is a bad link. So uh, I'll hand it off to Brent or uh, Deborah. I guess start with uh, ladies first. Uh, Deborah, your thoughts on this? What am I? What am I thinking about? You want me to tell you what I think is a bad link? Yeah, or maybe why there's some confusion out there as well. I, you know, I think any time that there is a major change that happens online or anything new is introduced, there's always a, a slowdown period where people have to get used to it or have to become accustomed to the changes, and so there is some confusion there. But honestly, um, you know, I, those changes happened a while ago, and everybody kind of should be understanding what's going on and, you know, working into, um, into new plans and into, into new ventures. Um, everything that worked before still works. It just works a little bit differently, and um, I, you know, I've always said there's no such thing as a bad link unless it's broken. Um, but really, what you need to focus on more than the links themselves are the pages that they sit on. So, for me, it's less about what you do and more about where you do it. I would concur with that. And you, Brent? Um, <clears throat> you know, just just being in the industry for a while, it's. To me, it's amazing how often the focus has shifted on strategies. What's hot right now? You know, what what small businesses want? What enterprise is looking at as far as uh, you know link building strategies? I think a lot of it's fueled by uh, you know just just penalties that are coming out, uh, new technologies, and just you know general hype around the strategies. But it's it's interesting to me, you know, that it changes so quickly that there really isn't any time to establish any sort of yes this is bad no this this is this is not bad per each each strategy you know if we're looking at like just outreach specifically uh, that's another one where you know you can look at it so many different ways it's it's really how it comes down to running the campaign um, it's really tough i mean it it is tough to educate the consumer and and stay current on it yourself yeah, I think the education of the consumer is uh, one of the toughest parts because, you know, when the people in the industry are having trouble uh, understanding what's happening, it's, you know, for people that uh, it's part of their business, but it's a passive part. It's like the lawyer. They don't want to become a lawyer in order to hire one. And yeah. uh, I think that's uh, and has been a problem for quite some time. Right. They understand the changes in the business. They know that things are different, and they they know they're either losing rankings or they're they're getting messages that they're not sure of. I think yeah. the biggest part of the confusion is nobody really knows what to do to fix it. Um, and while we get some direction from Google, sometimes it's a little bit vague. Um, you know about That's really what you way to put it. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm being nice today, <laughs> um, but but seriously, you know, people people really want more than anything. They want answers. They they would like some direction on on what they can do to help them rank their sites well. 
um, from that it splits off down many many different roads you know everybody has a different way of doing things and everybody has a different goal in mind so I think everybody gets it um, they just don't know how to move forward yeah one thing that I was talking to a couple of prospective clients yesterday and one thing that I picked up on is a lot of them have been they have been doing a fair amount of link building and uh, I think they were both kind of wondering if they'd been kind of uh, you know could have spent their money a little more uh, it might have been better spent another way they didn't <laughs> really see where they got benefit where they did even a year before that you know what I mean like it was like it wasn't a lot of things in our industry are kind of gradual, uh, but sometimes it gets a twist and it's quick and happens fast. You can you can still make things happen fast. Um, I guess the issue there really is longevity. How long do they last? So um, you know what worked 18 months ago, two years ago, just really doesn't work that much anymore. And I'm not really sure why everybody's surprised either. Things constantly change. Everything changes. Everything morphs. Everything grows. Like Rent said, technology is constantly coming on board. So, you know, we just have to, if you're a good marketer, a good webmaster, be aware of that, be aware of the changes, keep up on it, and learn how to adapt. Right. That's that whole thing. Adapt or die. <laughs> Everything so. that happened, you know, as far as the algorithm updates in 2012, Google had kind of been preaching that for a long time, and it seemed like, okay, we're finally going to take action on what we've been saying. So, you know, I definitely wasn't surprised that so much turbul turbulence happened in the SERPs, but it's, um, it's something now, you know, where if you're looking at some sort of, um, you know, SCM strategy that, that involves link building, some companies, you know, they'll spend a lot of money and a lot of time just back in the strategy. Um, there's really, there's really no confidence that I, you know, I want to go on record saying, okay, here's five hundred thousand dollars. Let's implement this strategy, and I can tell you six months from now, you're going to be good. You know, that's that's something where your personal experiences. I mean, that might make you a leader in this specific field, but you know, it, just one person's experience is is pretty subjective. Uh, that's you know a big reason why I definitely want to push for some transparency on strategies between other professionals. Yeah. The, uh, the other issue is also what you know what vertical or what niche you're in, mm -hmm. because what works fabulously well in one may not work at all in another. Right. And in a third, it may get you penalized because yeah. there there are some niches out there that certain types of link building are still common and they work wonderfully yeah uh, or but it's because everybody in that industry does it right and so that there is no real differentiation between that group but if i were to take if you were to take that tactic and put it somewhere else entirely you you run a fairly serious risk with that particular website and that's one of the biggest issues we've always seen is you know well this works for them you know, so that's how we wound up going from, you know, getting a few links in the best directories to getting a few hundred thousand links in any directory. Yep. You know, to what Steve just said, um, take it off. I, I don't disagree. I, I think some things work better in some than others simply because um, the news outlets and, and the sites are available to host more links. I don't disagree with that. But one of the things as webmasters and as SEOs we don't talk as much about are the type of webmasters that are online. When people come to me and they say, can you help me with strategy, you know, if they're a serial entrepreneur, meaning they're a webmaster with multiple sites, many sites, I'm not talking two or three, I'm talking multiple sites, serial webmaster, if they're a small business person, if they're a major brand, knowledgeable brand, or if they are someone who is what I call the middle of the road webmaster, there's really four different kinds. Each one of them has a different focus. The serial webmaster, man, it's time and money, baby. That's what they want. It's time and money. And they have to make things scale over a lot of websites. So they can't spend a lot of time doing the nitty-gritty marketing, say that 
maybe the, the webmaster or the brand, the brand just throws money at it. You know, and that's why they, they do as well as they do. The poor guy who's the small webmaster, the small guy, he doesn't have the time or the money. And so he's looking to do the easy things that he can do. And once he does them, he's kind of at a loss. And, and, so while I totally agree that it is, it is um, niche, I think in a bigger picture, it is your goal, too. If, like I said, if you've got multiple sites, the way that I'm going to approach that business owner is going to be way different than I would say a brand marketer or a small business guy or what I call the middle of the road guy or gal. Well, those, uh, those smaller mom and pop businesses, they're the ones that are at the most risk. Well, I don't know if they're... They don't, they don't tend to have the budget to explore better opportunities. And so they go to the $250, $300 a month guy who's going to use the lesser quality link building taxes because they simply can't push that. And then they're the ones that wind up getting hurt the worst. Hopefully only once. You know, oh, yeah, um, and <laughs> there, there is, you know, I, I, I get split into these discussions all the time. There's a part of me that says there's enough information online and enough sources online where you can read up and do the, have all the information and know what's right and what's not right. And Google's pretty clear about it as well. And then there's constantly people streaming in that, you know, that don't maybe know about those resources. So while I agree that it's definitely by niche nowadays for your, your success online, I, also think it's what type of webmaster you are. Um, how many times have we have, as professionals given advice that's never taken? Oh. <laughs> you know, constantly. Could so write a dictionary on that one. Sure, it, but that's human nature. That's not a criticism. That's just human nature. Wait. So, you know, trying to help people when you as somebody like Brent and I who are out there as linking strategists selling services, it's hard to box this stuff you know and that's what people want boxed answers people want to know that this is working or that is working and it sadly it's you know it's it's gotten because of the way things have come it's just gotten bigger than that I agree there that's for sure yeah I go along with that as well the 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 thing is though that uh, I think everything still works it works a little differently and sometimes you have to add other signals that you might not have had to use in the past. Like for instance, in the past, you would just do uh, news releases and they had a life of their own. Now you do a news release, but don't do Twitter and don't put it on Facebook and don't put it on Google Plus. Guess what? They're skeptical of that press release because you're not promoting it where they expect you to be promoting it. You're putting it on these little backwater places, i.e., they see you just trying to get rank, not... I, I think that's where you kind of... That's where a big piece of it, in, in, in my opinion, is. And those uh, signals are like verification uh, signals. Any... Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I, I would, you know, I would definitely agree with that. You have to be um, very strategic about, you know, where you're getting placement on, on new, new fresh content, and you know, one level deeper, the actual authorities of the profiles that are that are sharing them as well. Um, that's one thing, you know, I really focus on is uh, the actual brand itself and every possible signal that's that's coming into Google. You know, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, even, you know, LinkedIn company profiles, um, just just really having some um, integrity behind those profiles as well. Right. I think it is really important these days to, um, you know, no matter what channel you're at, you really have to come correct. So let's talk about sending out press releases because people like to do that as a tactic all the time. And it, it is a tactic that still works. Um, to some degree. So when you use companies like PR Web, uh, perhaps in Business Wire and those types of companies, that the bigger companies that have the, the contacts and have the contracts with companies, uh, the media people, you know, with the newspapers and the TV outlets and the rest of them, where people sometimes don't find the benefit anymore is doing the free press releases. That 
um, submission services, I'm sorry, the free, uh, free press release submission services, those types of services are no longer effective because Google has discounted all the crappy little sites that they were spitting stuff out to. But when you still go back to people like PR Web and you pay for the upgraded service and you actually have something that's worth it's news listening work. to, um, then it does get picked up by news sources, especially if your news source is geographically targeted. Yeah. If you have something that you know you're talking about in Austin, Texas, or Toronto, or Chicago, or whatever, um, it tends to get picked up by local services more. When you send that stuff out, too, makes a big difference. If you're trying to release a press release on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, good luck. You know, it's usually easier toward the end of the week. Um, and on the weekend, but you really need to have something worthwhile to put out. And once you do, you know, then it will get picked up. Yeah. For the That's most part, the media will not pick up and run a story if they go to your website and see it's a piece of crap and you don't have an About Us page or you don't have a media page to support anything that's in the press release. They are not stupid. You know, they, they know that as well. So press releases still work, but they work by people who are sincere about putting them out and spending, uh, sending out for news and not just for building links. And I think that's where the difference comes into you. And, and it kind of annoys me when people say, oh, press release links are dead. They're not. Just so, like infographics are not dead. I have, a, I have a question for you on that. With the potential for further online pickups that actually, you know, have value, um, how do you treat the anchor text within the, um, you know, PR web link? Is that something, you know, you're only doing branded now or? No, and the press release, when you're sending out press releases, if you're actually announcing news, mm -hmm. um, what should be hyperlinked is the event or the company and not so much the right. text. Yeah. So, you know, if it works out that you have your keywords in your event, you know, or your thing that's happened or whatever it is that you're announcing, then that's mm -hmm. fine. But I don't optimize the press release for anchor text. I optimize the press release for the media so that the media picks it up. I, I, I want I, them I, to, to run it. I'd imagine you have to um, be a, a lot more careful with that now just because of you know the amount of syndication, um, how many times that actual link and anchor text will be picked up, you know, just especially before a new domain starting out, um, you know, looking at the um, anchor text and saturation level within the link profile. If they're sending out a press release right away um, with, with a newer link profile, you know, just do you th is Google is Google looking at that in a proper way? Um, you know, with with the 340 links coming in from the you know the press release, something like that. Is that is it? I mean, should we be more careful with that? Do you think? Somebody else want to answer? If not, I mean, I'm happy to uh, answer. Worry about that, depending on the uh, service as mm -hmm. well. If you're going to, uh, you know, the basically the lower uh, rank on the scale, uh, yeah, I wouldn't do a lot of that. But if you're going to real press release sites, and right. one of the things that I use uh, for a guide on that is, is it actually part of Google News and? Uh, you know, can they tell you Google is putting our stuff in? Uh, mm -hmm. Not a lot of them can say that. And as uh, Deborah illustrated so uh, well, one thing I noticed that using PR Newswire, a lot of their releases were found on TV stations and places like that. Yeah. Uh, so the media was being put on media sites where you want to get visible. Do you really care if you're on, you know, uh, uh, just some press release site that's got a hundred others that don't really mean it? Mm -hmm. I think that, that kind of stuff is dead. Yeah. But, uh, real news releases, they have a place. Just like, uh, and, and what I would use as my uh, guide is if I won't put it down a social channel, I won't publish that PR. Uh, to me, that's kind of like the rule. If you don't want people to see it and it's just about the links, then that in itself should be 
a little alarm going off in your head like why don't I want people to see this? That's that, what that's, it always should be about. That's very similar to a, a litmus test we give to all of our clients when they ask they, they send us emails asking about where they should get links and the and my, my answer to them is always if you were cruising the internet and came across this page would you click a link on this page would you trust this page enough to say yeah I want to click that and if they kinda of go well no it's like well then why do why would anybody else trust it move on can I um, go back to Brent's question just for a second just bring up a point um, I know that people are really tentative right now about anchor text and there's even people out there saying you know do 20 percent keyword anchor text and 80 percent URL um, and so forth and I, I you know for whatever is being said I think the smart thing to do um, in this case if you run an anchor text um, in press releases is to keep in, a couple things in mind Google News um, drives results into Google search and the algorithm there is a little bit different than it is in the Google search engine. Before I go on let me say I'm not a Google employee you know so I'm not saying this verbatim but from my experience if you're doing press releases through the major press companies like PR Web and Business Wire and the rest of them and because they have relationships with these news sites that are part of Google News if you're going to get 300 links pointing back to you through your press release that have picked up, if you're really that big a story that you're going to get picked up by that, Google News is going to understand it, okay, because it's being floated through Google News. Right. So I wouldn't worry about that so much um, because what you have then are reliable news sources that have been vetted by Google News. You have to go through hoops to be part of Google News. You know, Joe Schmo, the ragman for some blog, <laughs> is not part of Google News. So not usually, not well. They've been really different about that lately. They've been really um, cleaning things up and a little more. Mm -hmm. I guess choosy is a good word. I'm not sure exactly. So I, 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 that's just not something through press releases, provided you have you know legitimate news. But right. again, they can see through it pretty quickly. Um, and when you use the free services, that's usually when that stuff ends up on the sites that have been created by the free services to host those press releases. Also, you have to remember that it gets released on uh, all those sites and then you have the people that scrape those sites. Right. And the scrape rank, me and Dave come up with that one when we uh, really started doing a lot of press releases is we started measuring the scrape rank and in the end we uh, started to realize that that could be causing a problem when you have that many people scraping those press releases because they're they're not on the same type of site that they are when you distribute it. So we were uh, especially when they started talking about the links coming from those sites, and when we saw uh, the first iteration of Panda. There were a few well-known uh, press release sites that got hit pretty hard, uh, which kind of showed that at least two of them have tried to fix their architecture in the meantime. But uh, sometimes I wonder if those aren't losing battles. <laughs> right. uh, just because of uh, what comes into them now. In other words, people are not going to rush to link to that stuff because of the stigma that's kind of attached to it now. And just so everyone knows, we've been uh, graced with uh, Garrett French's uh, presence here now. Hey, all. Hey, Garrett. Can you hear me? Hey, Garrett. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Garrett. This is fun. This is, uh, I'm in my new office. We just moved in and I'm very poorly lit. It's not as dark as it looks from the camera, but it's, it's been great, great so far. Now, Deborah, you were mentioning something earlier, and, and this is sort of tangential, spinning off a bit from what you said, but just the quality, <clears throat> the quality of the site. And I, I need to start some kind of way of testing this or think about a way of testing this, but just the impact that site quality itself has on, um, your, your, uh, your response rate 
first of all, the outreach, and then certainly you, the, the, the link rate, that you, uh, the, the number of links that you get, the link percentage. Uh, this, is, this is just from working with exact match domain clients, you know, cheap car insurance business, or, you know, cheap, cheap car insurance calculator biz dot net stuff. And, and, you know, we've, it doesn't matter how good the, the, the content is that you're creating on that site, um, fo you know, self-respecting linkers and, and, and uh, folks who have great links pages aren't going to link to it. They're going to take one look at your email at the, at the, at the URL that you're asking them to link to and, and, and not link. Um, and, and so, so that just sort of my tangential way of jumping into the conversation, but just something I've noticed lately, and it's just been hammered home, is what a quality website, the difference that, that building links for a website that is already high quality, uh, how much easier it is than, than if you're, you're building links for an exact match domain or just a, sort of a lead gen type of website. And it's, it's getting to a point where I'm, I'm probably going to start turning away uh, business, probably, not certainly, probably start turning away business that is um, exact match domain, lead gen type stuff. I would, don't hold me to that, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm definitely thinking about it. <laughs> the thing is, uh, in, down. Uh, <laughs> uh, Garrett, in your business, you have to do that because getting links for those sites is much tougher than it is for the sites where people actually want to be. Sure. Well, and, and then I've got, you know, I'm, I'm doing a lot of broken link building these days, and that's where I'm, what I'm really basing this on, this, this opinion on. Um, and and uh, a, a lot of folks who are used to paying for links, right, they're used to paying whatever a month to get X number of links, uh, they are not used to having to have great quality websites or branded domains, you know. They've, they've got all these their shortcut tricks, and, and what they have is, is, has been good enough for them so far. And so I think that's some of what I've been running into as well. Yeah, I'd like to expound on that a little bit, uh, Garrett. Uh, I think that uh, those people are coming to the realization that that website that, uh, you know, people really don't want to link to and that kind of crummy content, uh, those kind of things aren't flying anymore. And they're realizing they have to step up to the plate. Yeah. and actually become, re as Dave would say, uh, <laughs> from the dojo, uh, become remarkable. Yeah, uh, I, I've certainly found that in, in guest posting. I've gotten my, my rear end handed to me on some guest posting campaigns where I've used content that was less than, or suboptimal, as, as I've heard some people describe it. And um, it's, it's, uh, it's brutal. It's brutal now. Uh, you can find a home for it, for, for crappy content. You can still find a home for it. But... Um, you're, it's not going to be a good home. <laughs> it's not yeah, be the a home useful. has no foundation. Right, right, It'll right. Fall right. down around your ears. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's it's like the, uh, the the press release sites you're describing earlier, where the, the just sort of the made for links press release sites. There, there's there's so many of those guest post sites out there now. So, it's um it's interesting you say that, Garrett. You know, just with my experience in 2012, um, you know, really running outreach um, on a larger scale for an e-commerce company, you know, one of the reasons that worked so well was because the company, they weren't just good on paper, they, you know, they were actually good behind the scenes, the customer service was phenomenal, and um, I mean, that was a big reason it was so successful, just because the whole package of the business was good. Not sure. Just sure, I got a, um, I'm going to brag. Uh, this, this was a huge link builder moment for me. This is this happened last week, and I was like, okay, I'm a real link builder now. We got for a client, we got a link from Stanford, uh, Stanford.edu. I was just, you know, I was running around the house. I was euphoric for a couple of days, but I, it, I finally, that was when the connection finally, you know, okay, this is a great site that I'm building links for. I'm not really doing any work. It's the site itself that's doing. Yeah. All the work. Uh, and that's and that's why we earned that. That's that's we didn't earn any. The site was just a great site. It just it deserved the link, um, and that's been the the you know. And, and and I used to believe, and this was you know within even three to four months ago, that the content was good enough, you would get links. And and um, you know that's not always. That's just not always the case. Uh, and, and and you know. As you as you found, uh, having a legitimate site or a real site that you're building links for, a real company, uh, mm -hmm. can make a big difference. 
Um, right. But I, I will note that I even have, you know, I'm doing some broken link building for a large brand that I thought was going to really increase our conversion rates. <laughs> Didn't do much at all. <laughs> they have great content. It's a great site. I thought, you know, oh, great. I'm going to, you know, get up. Because uh, in broken link building, I'm finding, you know, we, our, our average is about 1.5%. And I was thinking, okay, we're going to get up to five, you know, standard for them. You know, we'll get 10% on, on sometimes. But um, even having a great brand name behind them, uh, didn't really uh, have the impact that I thought it would. Um, yeah. So, so that's, that's it, what the it, content it, is too. Uh, it's know. it's decent. It's it's not amazing, but it's 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 decent, and that's yeah. probably that's probably more the more the factor there. But um, but I guess it's just to say that it's it's there's so many factors that come down to when you're when. For me, when I'm build, cause I don't I haven't I don't do press releases. The only really the only tactic I've focused on for the last about two years has been broken link building. So I've really gotten uh, hyper focused on it. But but the factors that really seem to make a difference are um, just the quality of the website, um, certainly the quality of the outreach, and how related you your your content really is to the linking page. I mean, it's it's no brainer stuff, right? But it just keeps getting hammered home to me over and over again. Since you are doing a lot of that, and that's something that uh, me and Deborah were actually talking about that the other I day. Knew when we were going to bring this up. <laughs> <laughs> Go uh, ahead. Go ahead. That's getting on. harder and harder, as she said. Well, we all used to do that a few years back. Uh, well, not all of us, but it's become pretty popular because of the success that some people are having. One of the things that uh, I wondered about as a strategy for that was finding the broken links and building content for those broken links. Did you do it that way? No. Or do you build content and then find the broken links to go with it? Oh, yeah. We certainly start from the dead opportunity first, and then, but we're rarely create, uh, replacing content um, because the, the large scale opportunities that we're finding are not recreatable. Um, you know, uh, the mypyramid.gov, for example, um, government website here in the U.S. Uh, related to the food pyramid, uh, you know, and proper nutrition. Right. 50,000 50, linking domains in Majestic. So, you know, we're not going to recreate that site, but if we have a, a fitness or health or, or nut especially nutrition related piece of content, we could reach out to everyone and say, hey, here's, I, I call it a, a um, not a one-to-one -one replacement, but a, a um, you know, I, I don't have a, a good technical name for it, but a, a, a where we're we're giving them a, a the legitimate replacement, and then saying while you're updating, would you also be open to linking to us or linking to this resource? Um, we're doing a lot of uh, what I call storytelling, or uh, some people will call it uh, well, some people would call it lying, I think, or deception, but we're we're um, what, how we approach it is we're 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 doing we're saying we're research we're researchers, you know we were we're working on an article on X Y Z, and we're wondering if they had any suggestions. So we ask up front for suggestions or recommendations. So if anybody has gotten an, an, uh, an email like this, it was probably me, um, but or my my team. But then we're at you know and then we're saying by the way we are on this page. We saw that this was dead, and here's something else we found that we thought might be uh, useful. Here's a replacement. So we're giving them that one-to-one -one replace, or you know, we're giving them a, a real legitimate replacement. But then we're also we'll say, hey, this is something I've written. Uh, would you be open to linking to it as well? I think it's it's related. But we we actually get wonderful responses from people sometimes. Now some people call, completely call our bluff and hey, this was a good one. You almost got me. Uh, and we do get that, but, but it's not a, it's really not as common as you would think. You know, we're doing thousands of these emails a month. We get some wonderful. It's it's really makes me feel good almost to be a, something of a spammer because uh, we're we get such wonderful response. Sometimes. They're 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 legitimately thankful that we're helping them update their pages. We don't get links from everyone, of course, but, but um, we we do get uh, a fair amount of, of thanks from people. I, I'm sorry, I've completely derailed. Uh, we were no, uh, no, what we were no. talking about. It's a topic that's uh, you know, it's germane. It's it's using. Uh, let's see. Um. I think that uh, we should talk about outreach because it's kind of replaced another one of the what I would call foundational linking techniques, which was article marketing. Mm. And I saw that a lot of people just took the exact same content 
and are kind of doing uh, guest posting <laughs> the same one. Uh, I would think that the first thing that I would think of when I was doing that is, well, Google has already more or less cut these guys off. Why wouldn't they cut these other guys off? And then I, uh, when I start going through these backlink profiles, uh, people that did a lot of guest blogging and in that kind of style, you kind of see that uh, as I used to say I looked at other websites as content opportunities. Uh, in other words, I was looking at the quality of the content and the quality of the website from day one, mainly because I never believed that just a link is a link. Uh, sure, it's a, a link is a link, but some are much better than others, and I'd rather go for the ones that are much better because they all take about the same amount of time to get just sometimes you have to do more prospecting to get the better stuff. Anyhow, I'll just move on. And uh, what do you all think of the uh, blogger outreach? Uh, are you using it? What uh, play? What's uh, how does it play in your overall strategy? And I guess we'll start with Brent, who just come off a pretty big stint of doing that kind of thing. So yeah. we'll start with him. Um, I you know I, I've talked with. Um, with Garrett quite extensively, you know, when, when I was working on this campaign, um, I'm a big believer in outreach and, you know, I, I think it has a certain stigma um, attached to it right now. Um, you know, it really comes to how you, how you run your outreach campaign and, and um, you know, the amount of risk involved with it. It's, it's really um, a strategy that can pull in any link type, you know, broken link building is, is the way it's run, I think you know. The way I run it is is outreach. Um, it's you know, to me, I look at it as a way of kind of expediting your networking process online. Just as you would offline, this does it quicker online. And if 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 you're doing you know a, a really good job with your prospecting, the campaign is you know very on point. It's I I don't see a lot of risk involved versus the other the other link building strategies. Uh, it really comes down to you know who's running it though. I think it's going to be around for a while, and I think it's going to have value beyond just you know traditional SEO ranking value. Um, I've definitely seen that already. It's marketing. It's yeah. getting in front of the uh, right people, and mm -hmm. uh, I gotta say it. For me, when I think of outreach, I only think of one two, and that would be Garrett's. I use it for so many things. It's uh, I found for outreach, it, it was outstanding. But anytime I want anything out of off of Google SERPs, I go there because you know what? I don't have to gather it all up, and put mm -hmm. it into a CSV. Now, that's a prospecting side. We I do have an actual outreach tool. It's it's in the works. Um, it's it's a few months out, but it's it's just it's an emailer. It's it's uh, which which is kind of Buzzstream has something that is sort of a one by one email, uh, which which it didn't serve the purpose that I needed for for um, uh, broken link building. So we, we we did build something, but yeah, for for d definitely for prospecting, finding the opportunities in the first place. Thank you for the plug, Terry. Uh, the link prospector hey, you know, is, is that's what I'm about, man. <laughs> it's, it's a it's it's a Google scraper, guys. I mean, uh, it's just what it is, plain and simple. Um, and uh, indexer, but, I told you, never use that scraper word. <laughs> <laughs> you have a crawler. You just this is my PR agent here. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. You're right. We're a crawler, a crawler. Um, I never know who's listening. This is a Google voice. This That's is a Google Hangout. Of course. You're learning. So, yeah. Where's my hat? I need that tinfoil hat, Terry. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> They're always listening. <laughs> uh, but but at, at, on, a, on a note, as far as blogger outreach, we actually remove, we typically remove bloggers from mm -hmm. our outreach lists when we're doing broken link outreach um, because they're more likely to, um, may I, I, I don't know how comfortable this group is with, with curse words, so I'll just avoid them, but they're, they're more, more likely to raise a poop storm uh, online and uh, complain about us emailing them and it's, it's, 
just just more of a a, a, a risk. I find it, that's just for the tactic of broken link building. Uh, if if it's but but I, I I agree. I think outreach is is the you know it's pure marketing. If when when you're when you have smaller you have smaller lists that, that you've handpicked and handcrafted, um, I think it's the I, 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 it's just from an agency perspective, it doesn't get me excited because it's not particularly scalable. Uh, you know, high touch outreach, which I think right. often generates some of the best links. Um, I, that's why I tend I tend to look for stuff I can reach out to thousand people By the all way, at once. To, to kind of mention another tool, what you just talked about, I have a tool that uh, now I'm almost ready with that will do bulk emailing and oh. signal at a time. Right off the review. Brilliant. Well, well, I got go to gotta jump in there. <laughs> I got to jump in there now. When you start talking about outreach and automation, I think you've defeated the whole purpose of outreach. You know, to me, outreach is is individual. You've got to go to the people that you know, try to establish a a connection, a relationship with them to get any meaningful outreach. Mass mailing your list. Of, of uh, opportunities to me is is the dark side of it. <laughs> well, uh, I'm squarely in the dark side. No, I I, I see a place for both. For, I mean, as as the dark side, I see the I I can still see the value of the of the light side. Um, but but I I um, for, from a scalability perspective, from being able to deliver. And I sell links, you know, to clients. I don't sell hours, so um, I, you know, I'm looking for what can, what can, um, what can deliver that. And it's sure. usually, it's typically larger scale outreach. Now, I, I love. I think when I when I do link building for myself, I don't even think of it as link building. It's just promotion. It's it is emailing people. It's it's participating and in in, in, in um, you know back and forth emails and and asking for a review. You know, Asking for a review, you know, uh, but I don't think of it as link building at that at that stage. But but of course there is some link building to it. But it definitely falls more into the marketing side of things. But I I, I understand where you're coming from. But I I, I would love to hear uh, your thoughts on on making um, high touch outreach scalable uh, or doing it at I mean do you do that at scale for clients or are you? I I don't. Oh, okay. No, I don't I don't do link building. I build. Content and I build uh, relationships, but I don't. You know, the links will come or they won't. If I'm doing, if I'm doing the relationships right and, and providing decent content, you know, to your point earlier about, you know, dynamite content on a crap site is not going to do anything for you. You know, I think, you know, I think there's two different purposes. If if you're if you're doing outreach strictly for backlinks, you know, you you're only going to have this touch point. One time, maybe yeah. two times. Right. But if you're doing it for, um, you know, building up your advocates, building up your community, it, it is really an extension of customer service. That's yes. all that relational yes. mar relationship marketing now, uh, uh, Brent. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The strongest tool that a link builder or a webmaster can have is a dedicated email list. Yep. If you have mm. a dedicated email list. Mm -hmm. um, of people that have opted into your product, your site, your psyche, whatever. You can outreach to those people and get anything that you want going off the ground before you even go out into the public domain and start asking for links, regardless yeah. of what it is you're doing, whether you're doing blogger outreach or media outreach or article right. um, content outreach or visual outreach, it doesn't make any difference. If you have a strong email list, they are going to be your biggest supporters. Um, yeah, for just about anything. Yeah. So absolutely. you know, from that that's why they say the money is in the list. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, number one, people always say, "What's the best tool?" Your email list is your best tool. <laughs> I love it. I love it. We, we tried, um, Deborah, to that point. We tried doing so. It, it, it never coalesced the way I'd, I'd hoped it would. But we tried doing uh, surveys, customer surveys, and then turning that into into content. Um, it, it, we got we got we got great content out of it, and we got great engagement. But we didn't end up building a lot of links for it. Uh, for the, well, I've experimented with it once, but that is a question that I commonly ask people at the start of a campaign, especially if they're looking for they don't have a tactical preference of what I'm doing, um, just to see if they have that list already. Because you can, if they have a good strong list, they email regularly that they're also willing to let you 
play with a little bit because not everybody is. If it's a house that that is a an e-commerce house and they're used to mailing their list on you know four times a month and they know what return they're going to get each time they email, it's I've I've had a little tougher time getting you know getting a spot in the in the queue with with somebody like that. But I have I absolutely agree. I love a good email list. I yeah, you, you know what you can use that for is like quali qualifying too. Like if they're on an email list when you reach out to them, it, you can actually build a different uh, message to those people because you already have their trust. They've sure. already purchased something from you or are using something from you. Uh, those are always the best uh, prospects. Are the customers you already have are usually always the best prospects. Mm -hmm. You know, if anybody ever gives you an... Uh, I guess, or has some hesitancy or some pushback and objection, if you will, for using their email list. I totally get that, um, you know, f because there's theft involved in the rest of it. What I normally do then, I go after people and say, okay, you know, since you're an e-com site or you have uh, some sort of correspondence that's going out to these people, put something passive in the bottom of your email. So many people don't do this. They put it at the bottom and the end. could put a blurb down there that just says, hey, have you checked out our resource site? You know, we have lots of whatever helpful articles or great pictures or videos or whatever it is that you're promoting. Um, and on there, make a passive suggestion to either link to it or visit it. And the same thing on that page. When you go to the resource center on the site, say, hey, we know if you like this thing, go ahead and link to it. You know, people have exit boxes all the time asking you to sign up for um, newsletters and all. You can do the exact same thing about asking people or suggesting to people passively mm -hmm. that they link to you. <laughs> A lot of times, too, on websites, stuff like, um, what are those boxes called, you know, where you live live chat, oh, where yeah. you can talk with somebody on there. Underneath, a lot of them have space where they run ads or where you can put ads. Who says that you can't do that on your site or you can trade with someone else and passively put a message <laughs> driving them back to your content centers on your site that says, you know, if you like, um, you know, L.L. Bean, how about checking out blank? And, and you'll notice that a lot of the brands are co-partnering and do a lot of cross-promotional partnerships. <laughs> Those are the kinds of places that passively you can start asking. You would be surprised at the return that you get from the passiveness. Um, in, but I get about the email thing. But if you have a uh, newsletter sign up, and all these people do, and when you sign up for a new newsletter, you're going to expect to get something in sure. in the mail, you know, from the newsletter. So in there, you need to do you hit them over the head, and that's what <laughs> a lot of people do. You cannot hit people over the head. Yeah. You have to ask nicely. Now, and Deborah, then, oh, uh, Deborah, I was following in your footsteps, and this has been a few months now and we sort of left the project uh, by the wayside but I rented lists um, and that was something that I had actually read you had it's amazing I love this story you told about the, the concrete time. site yeah, yeah. it's I, I, I haven't it didn't um, get it to a point where I could sell the products to a client uh, but we did a we I rented one list and gosh I think it was eighteen hundred dollars and we did a survey so we're gonna survey these um, gift shop owners I think we got maybe eleven responses. Oh. It was terrible, but but um, uh, actually that reminds me one thing we've done with clients in the past, and you'll love. I think you'll love this. Um, we actually we wanted them to take a survey. That's the the client list. We wanted them to take a survey, but we're going to give them a discount coupon if they do take the survey. So we're actually building sales into this. E I, no, actually, I think I got this idea from you. I'm telling you. I, I'm thinking back. I'm pretty sure I got this from you. But you actually, I, 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 I did get this from you. But you drive sales from your survey, from, from the outreach you're doing to try and generate great content then to build links with. Um, as long as you keep that offline, don't advertise that kind of stuff online, you know, or on your sites or publicly. Make sure you keep those offers in email because... We have had people smack back, we think, because they were saying, if you link to us, we'll give you a free blank. Um, oh, yeah. And so, I'm sorry? Yikes. Yes. And so, you know, just keep that stuff quiet. For the first thing, you know, most of all, because of our friends at Google, but secondly, your competitors pick competitors. up on that and they emulate the promotion. So you yes. don't need that. You want to keep that stuff in email. Always keep that stuff in email. 
So can you can you rent less still? Yeah, there you'd be just amazed, especially from forum owners um, and people that have newsletters. You know, it's a residual. It's another part of income for them, and sure. they love it. Um, you just have to be creative. You know, with where you buy them. I no longer buy them from the list houses um, because there's so much junk in them. I usually do it. You know, Amano, Amano. <laughs> huh, I love it. We went, I went to a, a broker. Well. Deborah, you'd look for sites that are offering uh, newsletters, and then if you like the site, you would go to them. Yeah, and or <laughs> if I think that they have a a target demographic that's similar, and most of the time, you know, if you're selling one thing and you find someone in an ancillary market, the target demographic is similar enough. Hmm. Um, that you know you can offer them some money or offer them product or whatever um, in exchange for the list. Most people when I give you the list, what they'll do is they will add you to the mailing, and you do some sort of co you know co promotion in the mailing. It's real important that you establish partnerships with people um, in this regard and get them kind of nailed down because as things get more difficult online, that's you know that's going to be people are going to emulate again more toward the traditional offline marketing types things. Sure. Same thing with guest blogging. You know, if you don't nail down your blogging spots, um, you're going to miss out on being featured on the better blogs. And frankly, you know, you need to be featured on at least one of them somewhere. You need the exposure. And a um, lot of the um, larger websites are going to. That's where social media is so great, you know, because if you get onto those better sites, then uh, through the social outlets, you know, that that's just another another push for you getting out there getting your name out there and then the links start to generate on their own. How do you, how do you, you have that? a comment? <laughs> uh, I was just saying that a lot of the better websites are starting to go to um, you have to contribute a minimum of three months or six months before we will reciprocate with a link? links for wow. anchor text um, and it's making this whole process far, far more drawn out but the benefit we're we're seeing more benefit from actually being there consistently, from audience building, sure. than we are from any any value we would have gotten from the link. You know, the other issue is if you go to a better site, then you have a resume, yeah. yeah. So it's like if I was going to ask someone to host my guest post, I could always say, "Dude, I guess I guess." posted you know for Danny for five and a half years right. there's my resume right. and so it gives you kind of that foot in the door too Good you need that. to start so some, some of the best sites don't link out at all what, you know, what, what's the current thinking like on reciprocal uh, uh, links these days I mean uh, you know, I've heard them bad mouth uh, in the past is there anything new on that I have lots of reciprocal links I just didn't ask for them ie links happen and yeah. not always are the people actually talking when it looks like a reciprocal link. Well, I think the, uh, the other thing too, you know, Terry, that I think a lot of people they jump on the bandwagon of, of, of something like you know reciprocals or anchor text or EMDs or whatever it is. Somebody says it's bad. They see some evidence that it may be bad. And they immediately say, okay, then it's 100% bad. Yeah. I don't think anything is bad in moderation, okay? You know, 10% 10, 10 of your link profile being reciprocals might be too much, might be too little. But having some reciprocal links is not necessarily bad. Just as, just as having the same anchor text a few times is not necessarily bad. If you get carried away, now you got a major issue. Uh, I don't think that, uh, that that is necessarily a bad thing. I use some reciprocal links with some clients, and, and, and you know, I'm sure we all saw recently the the fact that Matt Cuss even commented on them being acceptable if if there's relevance, yeah. even if it's your own site. I, I think if you're scaling it as a you know as a service or you know like they you know, did two sites that happened in 2006, 2007. Excuse me, I'm sorry, doctor. I don't think it matters no, what you ahead. do. It it matters where you do it. Hmm. So if you have, you know, if you're swapping that's links big, with yeah. a, another authority site, I don't see where that's an issue. Sure. But really, that type of link swap kind of went out years ago. Yeah. What, what you get then is, well, it's, it's certainly, 
what you get now is blog links, uh, what do they call them, blog roll links or, you know, back and forth article links. I, I think they can be pretty well explained. Um, and as long as they pass, a, you know, you feel like they can pass some sort of visual review, I don't think swapping links is bad. Would I make it a great part of my tactic? No. Right. I mean, where do you put them? <laughs> you know, no, I, where do you put them? To your point, Deborah, it's, you know, putting, it, it, getting, it, you know, you get your an article on search engine land, that's something that's worth linking to. And, and of course, you've got to link back from, from that. As we, you know, I linked to, Deborah, you wrote a review of the link prospector. And of course, I linked to that. You know, absolutely. Is that is that a reciprocal link? Eh, sort I I mean we link to each other but um, I, I, it, I think that that is by the nature by the physical uh, act you obviously but did you do that on purpose and the answer is no, no. we didn't swap links because we had a prearranged agreement right um, no. you, know, you gave me all that money to review your <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and something else that may come in <laughs> the timing of it, you know, the temporal issue. If if I throw a link to uh, to your site, Deborah, on the first of May, and then along about the twenty seventh of June, you link back to me for something, and both those links are relevant. You know, I think Google picks up on the fact that the discoverability was forty two days apart. That doesn't look as obvious as the two links going up on the same day. Okay. Well, there was a link swap software that was out forever, where it was just mass. E they would mass email and, hey, you should link to me, and I'll link to you from this page. You put it up, and I mean, it was all automated. I think that sort of is 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 it's just just an absolute no no. But I think um, at a, at a small scale, at a you know, as as I think Doc was saying, you know, just a little bit of it, and and certainly not uh, you know. Necessarily a thought-out tactic, but but to some degree you could. I mean, maybe maybe uh, you know. I think pre-linking the people and then sharing that they were mentioned or discussed is is fair enough. I did that a good bit of that for clients. You know, the, what are the, you know the top fifty blogs and of blah blah blah, and you link out to a bunch of people and then you hope to get some links back to that. I mean, that's basically reciprocal linking. Um, but but any, I you know I don't know. Um, I I think. Uh, just don't overdo it, and certainly don't over. You know, don't use the the automated software for reciprocal linking, and and get all exact match anchor text and that sort of thing. Well, I just as a general rule, I try, and this is not something I that I quote as a as a target number to anybody. It's just that I try to never exceed one type of of link, whether it be the the type of of uh, source site or the anchor text. I try to never exceed 20% of my profile being the same sort of link. Mm -hmm. That just to me it seems to be a safe number. That's a very arbitrary thing. I pull it out of my butt and, and I've never exceeded it and it's never hurt me. Uh, maybe 40% is a safer number. I don't know. My guess is that 20% is probably pushing it. But uh, anybody hear what sounded like gunfire just now? Oh uh, yeah, that's me here. Okay. That's me. <laughs> Brazil. Uh, the Brazilian uh, street life. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to um, ask a question. So sorry. Uh, so Diane uh, in the uh, is asking, what is the best way? To search for this, I think that's fireworks. I don't know. Nobody's <laughs> shooting. Oh anymore. my god. <laughs> Okay. I don't We're think that's anybody shooting one today, right. not right now at least. So anyways, what is the best way to search for link directories to add your site? She's asking. What is the best way to search for link directories to add your site? So, <laughs> um, <laughs> general, yeah, general directories uh, that are still online, if she's talking about general directories, which I assume that's what she's talking about, um, there's probably a handful of them that are left uh, that ha still have some editorial uh, chutzpah, I guess, if you will, uh, in the eyes of the search engines. And that's the Yahoo directory, um, the Joe Ant, um, Best cool. of the Web. Yeah. Um, I would probably throw Ezalon in there. I would throw family friendly sites in there. Hmm. Uh, and I guess that's about it. Okay, um, okay, you said Yahoo. 
I, I would do well. I I would pay for for me anyway. I I always pay for Best of the Web, Yahoo, uh, family friendly sites, Ezalon, and Joe Ant. Two of those I've never heard of. So. Yeah. How's business.com, Deborah? Do you use Family that one? Family friendly. No, I no. don't. Not anymore. Not since they've changed hands again. Um, they just seem like they're kind of with kind of a mess. Sure. Um, yep. Sites in a big mess, I'd say. So let's just uh, go over that again. One, yeah, one who, that, so uh, Ant, I wanted to just give Diane okay. the answer. The best uh, directories would be Yahoo, Joe Ant, Best of the Web, Family Friendly Sites. And what, what was the other one you said? Ezlon. E Z I L O N. Ezlon. Ezlon. Yeah. Okay. They're a little bigger in Europe, but they do have a very good U USA directory. Okay. That's All right. Thank you. I think if you're looking at directories, uh, and I'm sure, Deborah, we've talked about this in the past, uh, distinguish between the niche directory and general directory. Mm. It, for sure, niche directories rock. Like Google knows that those are basically on just pretty much one topic. Mm. And they're usually reviewed much better. Uh, there's lots of reasons why you want those pure niche plays. And to find those, use your keywords and add the word directory. Or, uh, better still, uh, use Garrett's tool, and there's built-in queries, correct, Barry? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Garrett? We have, um, you can sign up, and we give you three runs of the tool for free. Um, you can select the directory report type and put in a few of your, I, I wouldn't say necessarily your, your, your high, I would say put in your highest level SEO keywords. The stuff that you don't necessarily expect to rank for, um, but, but would be kind of awesome if you did. Uh, just your highest level, biggest head terms. And, and you can put in up to five and, and search away. Um, now, I, that said, I'm not sure that there's really, I think just just Google alone would be would be sufficient for some niches. It depends on the niche, really, how how many um, directories are going to be. But I can't imagine there being hundreds yeah. of niche directories. I think it's um, usually you know a handful again per niche would yeah. be my expectation. Let me, let me two things. Uh, Sheldon asked about the DMOZ, uh, the Open Directory Project, or DMOZ. Um, you know, I always try. I always still try to get in there. Sadly, I no longer have any pull over there since I've been gone for quite a while and everybody's changed. I used Everybody's to got a pull there. It's called a walk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to. Just I, gotta I, know who to pay. I was an, an editor for years and so at least I knew other people there but they're all gone so there's mm -hmm. nobody there anymore. I do still try but to that, to that, um, you know it's only been what 18 months since Google dropped them as, as their directory so I still think that they probably have a little oomph somewhere. They are a great place to look for niche directories. If you yeah. go to the yeah. DMZ and search on your keyword, typically the category in there will have a, an option for directories and you can yeah. click on it and go through them. Um, sometimes those pages have not been updated in a while so those links are kaput, but that's a really good place to look for them. I would agree there. Yeah. The um, I had something else to say and I've totally forgotten, so never mind. Niche directory related was that? Yeah, niche directory. Yeah. What was I going to say? Okay. Niche directory. Yeah. And, there, and there's oh. a lot of associations that have a, a business directory mm. too. If you, That's great. yeah, it's an expensive drop, whereas some of the other niche directories are a little more. Uh, oh, I know what I was going to say. If you find a good one, um, and most niches have some solid niche directories, um, they are a terrific place to drop content to drop articles. Most of them have article banks. Hmm. Um, they have forums in them, you know, in this they've really expanded themselves um, in recent years and um, we find them as a as a great resource for that. Hmm. Yes, yeah, best of the web is the, like the uh, it's not quite the same as dropping an article on an article uh, easy site say. It's uh, much better to be on those directories that are doing a few things. Steve, oh, 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 oh. you do a lot of work in that field. Uh, 
Yeah, it's did at one slowly point. Slowly tapering off. We've been focusing more on like forums that have articles. You know, to have an article section. <laughs> so you're, you know, you've got a forum that talks nothing about bass fishing, and you're working for Bass Pro or somebody or Tracker Boats or somebody. Obviously, that's where you want to be. So dropping a, a you know solid article for them is is a no brainer. Um, the standalone article directories um, over the last year. Oh my um, gosh! Have been um, tapering off dramatically. I'm gonna be a few minutes late, okay? Uh, I, th I think forums to that point forums are um, really overlooked in a lot of cases I'd love uh, that. I do too I I, I um, had a client this is my one of my first clients before, uh, 2008 or so in woodworking and you know I think even today there's really not a whole lot of woodworkers that are have taken up and, and I'm speaking to, I'm probably wrong. I haven't looked. It's it's is five years later, but they're they're just no one was doing social media in woodworking except for on forums. They weren't excited about Twitter. They weren't excited about Facebook. They were on they were on forums 1.0. You know, this is social media 1.0, guys. I, but I think they're they're so when when people talk about social media today, it's I never hear people talk about these these wonderful wonderful forums that are still alive and thriving out there in the in the right in the right spaces it's not everywhere right I mean but but some you know I, I I always go back to woodworking I'm sure fishing is the same way I'm sure there's a real yeah. just wonderful forum community or several usually there's several uh, that, that that you can engage with get I think I think one of the, the one of the most overlooked sources for content ideas uh, just for conversations that are that are perennial that keep happening in forums then then you that's that's an article topic right there that's going to well guess what get you links from forums because <laughs> they're talking about it all the time uh, Dem's got to go so I, I do that was oh goodness uh, thanks so much yeah. uh, that was my daughter, and I forgot to pick her up from school. Ah! <laughs> oh, that's not good. Um, she can wait. She's fine. She's in the ninth grade. She can wait um, for just a minute. Um, forums. I totally agree. And Steve, if you're looking for something about fishing for serious, you want to check out the groups at Yahoo. Yahoo groups is something nobody talks about anymore, but they are amazing, and especially for... Uh, I would say outdoor enthusiasts, cooking, more of your your society type niches. Yahoo Groups is just an amazing outlet, um, and it's humongous, and it's just it's incredible how many people are on there. What's interesting about Yahoo Groups too is the demographic runs older, which is kind of good, especially because older people have a tendency to spend more money. So it's a good demographic, you know. Wise is there. Um, yeah, we rock, um, and. <laughs> Well, you know, I had to laugh this week. Somebody had, uh, I think it was Aaron Everhart, had written an article on Search Engine Watch, and we were referenced because of our age, you know. So I was like, damn, I'm feeling we old. Huh, old this week. But um, the other thing about forums, uh, people who are on forums typically have a very high knowledge level, mm. which if you go through and you look at the senior posters, it's listed on the side in their avatars. Um, these people have blogs, and they are an untapped source of guest blogging. And but more so, they're an untapped source for writing. You know, to oh. to write for you or to be a guest writer guest and that kind of thing. Brilliant. Because they are um, enthusiasts. Yeah. <laughs> so they they really are a super duper thing. But so are Google or Yahoo Groups. So Deborah, one question you before you go know. about Yahoo Groups. How do you approach them? Who is the gatekeeper, and how do you? You have to join, and okay. you've got to join the group um, and be part of the group. You can't just go in there because they're closed. Or I haven't been in there in, in several months, so they might have changed things, but I doubt it. Um, but I like to farm that place too, and, and do it before Marissa Mayer figures out it's a money loser. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it takes it but um, there you have to go in and join is to answer your question. Okay. And once you do, though, it's it's pretty easy because they keep an archive um, of all of the years back, so you can go back through all of the postings if you want to. Hmm. I was just thinking that would also be a good uh, place to start to look for the influencers in social. 
they would have had their background start probably in forums. They, they do, and you'd be surprised at what you find. You'd you also be surprised that forums have Facebook pages. Hmm. Um, be, and if they're a really active forum, and, and they have a Facebook page as well. So, you know, look for the tie-in there. Um, and one quick thing, you know, buying Facebook ads right now, especially with the targeting that they can do, is an awesome way to build links because you can really, really get people focused on um, either finding those people that want to link to your content or finding people who can write it or finding people who can host it. And I'll just leave you with that little tidbit to figure out. Um, but <laughs> Facebook ads right now are, you know, really, really a good, a good thing to go to. But all of the old venues, what they do is they just harbor a lot of opportunity. Hmm. That's a great point, Deb, because, you know, I think the other thing, too, the, the people that you find that are very active in forums are going to be very receptive to opportunities to, to uh, write articles or, or guest posts for you. They because, really are, Sheldon, because they're geeks. You know, they're at heart. They're on there because they understand how to manipulate their computer, and they have a love of something. So it's the best of both worlds for people like us. You know, we're looking for yeah. people like that. Right. So, yeah, and, and a lot of those people are in there specifically because they're trying. You know, they're they're starting their own brand building. Yeah. Hmm. Absolutely. Uh, now another another thing similar to forums though is like right here on Google Plus is the communities they're they're uh, uh, forum style based so that that has some opportunities uh, there too I think. That's Got to run, but this has been fun. Um, Thanks so much, Deb. Wonderful, okay. wonderful to see you again, Deb. Yeah, you too, and uh, I'll see you all on the web. All right. <laughs> see Bye. You. Bye. Bye, Bye, Deborah. Bye, Aaron. Bye. To um, pick up where Garrett left off, we were talking about forums and um, content creation. One of the um, little tips or secrets we've been using for a long time is um, we'll go to a niche forum and you look at all the um, sticky posts, the pinned posts at the top of, the for of every forum topic because that's the question that gets asked all the time. Mm -hmm. yep. And that's the content you want to write. That's the infographic you want to create. The mm -hmm. video you want to create. And most of those, most of those topics are closed, so for no new content. Right. But you can contact the webs, the, the you know the forum owner, and say, hey, you know, here here's some more information about this subject that would probably be really good to be in this, you know, pin topic. And they'll open it up and, and pin it for you, place it for you. Um, drop a solid link for it and drive a ton of traffic for you. I want to share a story that's yep. that's similar as far as content creation and forums. Uh, but back in 2008, uh, when I was working for this woodworking site, I would actually ask questions in the forums. Um, not every, and I had to eventually. Um, I was I was taken to task a number of times, and I learned many hard lessons. And woodworkers are not very forgiving of marketers, uh, but I you know. But anyhow, I persevered, and I, I and, and that just as a side note, if anyone is thinking of of going into in forum engagement, you certainly are. You be either careful. need to be completely transparent or as opaque as you could possibly be. And I would I would lean at this point I would lean towards transparency. But anyhow, I would I would ask you know for tool recommendations because I'd want to write a guide. Uh, you know the best powers, uh, best circular saws. Uh, and so I, I just throw a, throw a thread up. Hey, I go because there were six or eight that I was a, a part of, and I go to all of them. Then I just tally the results, and that was wh whichever one's got the most votes, and those were the best. And and uh, we were an Amazon uh, affiliate at the time when it was still uh, equitable to be so. And um, uh, that so that was one of the, our posts that would go up. Uh, most most dangerous power tools. I asked people what they thought the most their most dangerous power tools were, and that was that was a huge hit um, in, in in the forums. So it, tons of replies and turned into a great piece of content. So so the forums and I don't know you, you really have to um, tread carefully in this because you're you're directly taking their words in some cases quoting them which is which is completely legal to do but just not everybody likes it and they might um, ostracize you and some people wouldn't uh, comment um, but I did I, and I did take to saying in my threads and this is because of um, some feedback I got from someone who uh, didn't like what I did I quoted him without his permission he didn't realize he's gonna be quoted so I would say 
what you say here may be used on toolcrypt.com warning. And some people ate it up. You know, some people are just hams. They want to have their, their name out there. So they'd see me post and they go, oh, I'm going to get on Toolcrib again. Uh, but but um, other people completely avoided it. So if you're going to do something like that, just just tell people that that's what you're thinking. And and frankly, approaching the forum, we, we typically would approach forum owners first and ask their permission to engage there. Um, and I think I'm, my guess is in this day and age, more and more people are going to be asking you for money to do that because a lot of the bigger forums, at least in woodworking that I recall, um, had paid sections just for, you know, Porter Cable, any of the big names, um, gosh, would have their own section that they paid for, that they sponsored, that people could come and ask because they're, they're such big forums, you know, for, for this topic. But um, but anyhow, uh, just tread carefully and ask and, and mm -hmm ask for permission unless you're you know enough about the space to um, uh, be opaque I guess hey, hey, Garrett, I have a quick question for you probably raise some eyebrows eh? I'm say again I, I was just asking Steve uh, who's does a lot of forum moderation when you uh, uh -oh. do what we call cross uh, uh, posting on multiple forums the same question yeah. Uh, they picked that up, brother. Yeah. Matter of fact, we've gotten to the point over in a couple of them where it's it's an insta ban. No we, kidding. So, yeah. yeah. We, we if and we have mods who that's what they do. If they see a low post count person come in and post a, a specific question, we'll give it six hours and then do a um, exact max search for it. And if it comes up in more than two places, they're insta banned and gone. Yeah, it's just it, it's gotten so. It's so what I'm talking about, it's gotten out of hand. Then yeah, or something like, like that. When the forums that me and Steve, I was on with Steve. That's how I know it. Steve and I actually met uh, met on a forum a few years. Um, uh, Web Web Pro World, we're starting yeah. to be much more aggressive with that. Um, we, Is it, are people generating so content, or what are they doing? What is the out? What are they trying to? What usually it comes in with, you know, a low post count person will ask a, a short question. It's maybe a couple of, you know, a couple of lines long, not very big, or they'll come in and they'll just drop a little nugget of knowledge, and um, you'll see it on twelve different forums, and it's all posted within a few minutes of each other. Uh, you know, it's real obvious what they're doing, and yeah. we, it, it's just ban hammer gets dropped. Ban hammer. I love the ban hammer. I, I <laughs> feel it with a very strong hand. That's a T-shirt that needs to get made right there. <laughs> yeah. hey, hey, what are you guys' thoughts on on forum profile link building? Um, since we right. talked about forums and link building, I know I know they get spammed a lot and stuff, but Mo most most popular forums have those pages completely de-indexed. And no followed, and um, I know when we were running um, SEO workshop and um, SEO shop forums, uh, we we actually aggressively filtered out um, link profile or forum profiles. Um, if you had zero posts after sixty days, you were deleted um, entirely. So we didn't. We went the other direction from most of the forums that say, you know, we've got four hundred million users. No, you don't. You've got four thousand users. <laughs> you've got four hundred million people who signed up to get the free link. Got, got a link, yeah. You know, so our forums tended to be very, very small user counts, but every single person there was active. Yeah. Right. And Steve, I have a more. question for you. Was what I was doing um, was that pretty egregiously in violation of? Was that pretty? Was that awful? Um, um, I wouldn't. It, 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 it's like everything else. It's how it's done. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and there's, you know, it's terrible because we'll, we'll make an exception for one person and we won't make an exception for the next 30, <laughs> um, which is kind of an issue for me, for me, because I'm, I'm kind of a fan of, if you're going to slap one person, you got to slap them all. Right. Just because they've been there for five years don't mean nothing to me. Right. We, uh, we were linking back to people too. Like we'd link yeah. back to the thread and, and sure. put names in there. I mean, it wasn't like we were just copy and paste it and then put our name on it. Right. So for me, I thought it was a way to, to showcase the forums as well and, and try and drive some traffic towards them. I think that's how I pitch it to the forums. You can too. tell the difference. Um, we, we actually added um, all the forums that I'm actively involved in. I now have a mouse over that I can just swing my mouse over the top of their IP address and it pulls up what country they're from. 
and, and I know that's a, that's a horribly racist thing to say, but you can make an awful lot of quick judgments based on that one little piece of information. Sure. Right. Um, and, you know, and there are exceptions to every rule, obviously, but, you know, for the most part, forums have been abused for so long. There's nothing new. Um, right. And, um, and it's the, the, the more general forums, the stuff that are owned by um, large companies like WebPro World, they're a little less concerned with keeping the community clean than they are with building their list. Because yeah. everybody that signs up automatically gets added to their email list. Right. I used to work uh, over there at the okay. Pro World. So, I, I used to I used to have a product on how to make money off of SIG files and forms, so I was probably part of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't feel so bad about spamming forums like I used to do. I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one. In the uh, profile spam, uh, I've seen a couple of uh, people that had... Uh, Unnatural linking that were <laughs> yeah, it's involved called file in profits. profile spam, and that's not a good one at all. Well, <laughs> if, if anybody wants a prime example of what having thirty thousand X Rummer profile links dropped on your website can do, threaten me. <laughs> I will gladly pay the fifteen dollars to show you. <laughs> oh, so don't send you a link removal request threatening to sue, huh? Uh, yeah. Well. That's the other, you know, on on the other side of link building is link removal, yeah. and it's gotten out of hand, big time. Because people have gone from, hey, you know, we've decided that you've got a low quality website. Well, there's a great way to impress me to begin with. Right, right. We think your site sucks, so take our, our take our link off of it. And if you don't take it off, we're going to add you to our disavow list, and that could hurt you. It's like, well, not as much as these 30,000 extra Romer links are going to hurt you. Uh, <laughs> so, Unbelievable. I mean, there's a, there's a way to be polite about that. If you want your link gone, just ask. Well, I mean, no problem with taking your link down because you're an idiot. Steve, <laughs> hey, 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 Steve, I wonder, I wonder how the SEO uh, of, of link building in Costa Rica is these days. Uh, yeah, I think he had some issues as well. Um, <laughs> but it's just, I, we, we've never really been big link builders here. We've been more of, a, I, I want to say, community builders is a horrible name, a horrible term too, but we've always just basically done traditional marketing. Inbound we go marketing? Where, we go where the customers are. Looking for an audience. That's what I call it. I'm looking for an audience. Always have been like that. And, yep. and the trick uh, is you've got to think laterally. Because if you're going right down the center of your niche, you're going to be right there with all your competitors. So you got to think to the left and the right a little bit. If you've got a self-storage locker teaming up with funeral homes is kind of a neat plan. It's kind of morbid. But if you work at a system where, you know, you know, grandma's passed away, where are you going to put all her crap? <laughs> and, you, right. you know, the funeral homes work with you to build some relationships with the local self-storage units. So you take all grandma's stuff, put it in self-storage until you're ready to deal with that part of life. And right. you know, so you kind of have to think a little laterally as well, too, because all the self-storage guys are going right down the same path. So you have to come up with other ways. That's what I call it. I call it even with uh, press releases and any kind of, uh, kind of, let's call it content marketing. I'm always saying, what's the hook? What's our angle? You know right. What what's going to make us different than the ten other guys who right. are so, the exact same thing? So I think I like what Steve's saying. I mean, you know, you can do the branding like the uh, Grandma's Dead mini storage units that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, see, and I mean, this comes back to where you know Google's always said, you know, you know, build relationships with people in your you know relation. It's related, related content, related topics. I can make damn near anything related to damn near anything else in two steps. Hey, cell phones, it's related to everybody on every site because everyone has a cell phone. So there is no relation. It's every person on there is a potential customer. They're a potential, you know, they're going to use that product. So why would I care whether it's related or not? They're all related to it. That's I never understood that, uh, that, uh, rationale for finding links that they have to be related. No, it, it, they it, have it, to be fun game. targeted. 
We used to play that game all the time. It was almost like six degrees of separation with Kevin Bacon. I was just going to mention make, that, yeah. Can you relate these two topics to each other in two steps? Right. Yes, I can. Right. And, no. and, and we, that proved a lot of things for us. We do a lot of that in, in broken link building, Steve. So yeah. we'll say, um, you know, for my, uh, you know, uh, well, I can't. I don't know who's listening. Gosh. Uh, so, so hopefully it, lots of people. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm like, oh man, this, this client could be online. I, I'll, I'll just give an example that was sort of unexpected. We didn't create the content, but we found an opportunity, a heart health site that was down and, um, or the, they had changed their homepage. They, all they had done is change their homepage. It didn't 301 redirect. So there was, I think 800 uh, sites still pointed at it. I had a client with some wonderful content on heart health and addiction and how addiction can impact uh, your your the health of your heart, which of course it does. And um, so that's and then I was describing that to Ken McGaffin. We're, I'm doing a lot of webinars with him these days, and he he. He called it creative relevance. You know that leap that Steve, you're talking about that one one step you can take. But but that was that was a prime example. We we do a lot of that because so often in broken link building, you don't know what's going to be dead. You don't control what's dead. Um, you you only control uh, how how creatively you can you can make some relevance between what is dead and and what uh, what you're pro what you're going to be promoting to these people who are still linking. I love it. I, it's it's I think. Um, it's one of the most important skills, I think, and certainly for for broken link building. But I think it's just a really powerful skill to have to be able and to it's see one those of the kinds most of fun skills to have. <laughs> I love, have you written any any articles on it, Steve? Like walking it through or how to I, do it? I very religiously avoid writing about anything that I do because I don't like to share things. Because the, the last couple of times we shared stuff, it just got out into the wild and was horribly abused. Uh, you know what I mean. So when yeah. I do share. Th things it's usually in a real private community where I'll sit down like this with just five or six people and say okay here's what we're doing this is how we're doing it and this is why it works right um, what I that's why I, I've never really built that reputation online as the guy go-to guy because I try to hide <laughs> hide what you're doing and I've been doing that more and more lately um, same reason just you know you you find something that's really working well and you'd prefer not to like it's the, called like, wisdom. Wisdom. <laughs> the last time we did something in public, we mentioned um, how to get followed links on your Twitter profile. And within a week and a half, a couple of big name SEOs put out these giant blog posts mm. about it and just blew it up. Yeah. It's like, oh, thanks, guys. That's the worst. I, I get so your ideas nice. poached by the by by the big yeah. shops with with a lot of reach. Yeah, like, ah. we, we laugh about that over in the dojo quite a bit. Yeah, and it's like you know we were talking about that six months ago. Thanks for joining the club. Right, but we talk about it in private, and I think that's what makes these smaller groups better. Yeah, um, you know it's the same thing with can leaks hurt you. We we demonstrated and could prove almost at will five or six years ago that I you could hurt a website with links. Sure. But nobody wanted to believe us because we refused to give exact low-level de details of how we were doing it. But we were able to blow websites clean out of the index for, you know, very specific things. Well, I, I would say, like people that like uh, myself who knew the people involved, I never doubted it for a, a moment. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, that's uh, kind of why you got to be pretty careful about who you. When, when when Mickey the thumb tells you that this is gonna hurt, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you gotta believe. Him, right? <laughs> yeah, because I know when that first was going around, I was pretty skeptical. But as soon as uh, you know, seeing the people involved and just seeing enough of it to say, okay, that was good enough for me. Uh, also, you know, figured out the one main component to it and it made a lot of sense it's like everything else in the world it's all about thresholds yeah you know once you cross that line it's almost impossible to uncross it unfortunately i do that all the time with my wife so <laughs> <laughs> that's why you and the dog are in constant company eh, Steve? Yeah. <laughs> i dance across that line with her all the time 
Um, but you yeah. work so hard at it, though. <laughs> she makes it easy. Uh, <laughs> I'm just looking through my notes real quick here just to see if there's anything we haven't covered. Um, yeah, thanks. I couldn't find mine. <laughs> <laughs> and I was the one who sent them out, so there you go. <laughs> I, uh, I think as far as, you know, kind of, we probably should start wrapping up. We're closing in on two yeah. hours here. Um, I think one of the biggest things we can probably all agree on, anything that's horribly automated should be should be avoided. Um, there are obviously there are tools, automation tools that are useful and can be used. But when it's a, a mass tool like Xromer, where you just put in a couple of lines and push a button and, well, look, I got 10,000 links. Um, those things you, you just need to avoid like the plague. Uh, there's almost no good way to use them. Like, just like a spinner. <laughs> exactly. Article spinners is another example. I have yet to see an article spinner do half as well as a real writer. Right. And then you got to kind of look at where those article spinners are putting their stuff. I think that is a, as big a problem as the spinning. Yeah. Uh, you know, these people say, well, how would Google know? that a blog is doing, you know, that a guest blog is like a sham. It's just paid posts. Well, it's, look at the home, the front page. <laughs> We've seen it, Steve. You know as soon as yeah. you look at it. Uh, I, I this was, is bad. I, w I was talking with a, a blog network owner over on Wicked Fire, and he was talking about how his, his network was undetectable. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and right. so out of curiosity, I paid to be on three of his blogs. And he gave me the URLs to prove that they had been posted. And within two hours, I had identified over 180 of his blogs. And I said, like, if I can do this manually by myself in two hours, what do you think Google can do? Yeah. In two minutes. <laughs> if, if you're able to find the fingerprints and footprints that easily, yeah. you know they can. Yeah. So it's, you know, all this, I mean, and again, we're coming back to niche. We come back to thresholds. We come back to how, how he heavily you use it. Um, in some of these niches, this stuff still works, and it probably always will. Um, but then again, on the other side of the coin, if you've got a real business with a real brand, you just need to avoid the, the quote, easy way out. Mm -hmm. and do it the hard way. Mm -hmm. Do it right. Hey, Steve, quick question going back to something you said earlier, though. Um, do you think Google gives a pass on certain techniques to certain niches then? I don't Did think I... that they give them a pass. It's that that they have so little else to go on. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. think I think there's I agree. right. What a big Especially brand can do, and what uh, Joe Schmo can do, two different things again. Because that big brand, uh, they're expected to be in the results, whether they're spam or not. People, if they're a well-known brand, when they search on that brand. They expect to see the brand. Let's see. We um, we were laughing. There's a an a niche that we follow pretty closely, and the entire first page was nuked, just completely nuked. Everybody that was on page one it was gone, and we're talking a high dollar money term here. And the guy that slipped into number three had 28 links to his website. All of them were for Google Plus. But he had just published a real book, not a self-published book, not a you know an Amazon ebook. This thing was a real hard copy. Go to Barnes and Noble and buy it off the shelf book, and he's killing it. He's absolutely killing it. And everybody else in the in that market is just freaking out because all their money's gone, and they want to know where this loser came from. It's like, well, this loser actually did something useful. <laughs> oh. Well, yeah. look at the dojo. Uh, Dave and I didn't do anything. We're stuck. We're trying to move for SEO training, right? Stuck on the third page for years, literally years. Uh, all of a sudden, we're sitting number three, and all the shit. I went to Fiverr and bought you a bunch of links. All the poop that was above <laughs> us, using article marketing and all that, you know. All the stuff that me and Dave were saying, don't do that stuff. Uh, but see, we replaced them. This is the argument you and I have had. You and I have this argument all the time, though. Who, who, what name a business that can wait three years? Yeah, yeah, I agree. 
it comes down to our expectations, right? Our expectations where we know this niche, it's not going to be easy. You weren't shelling out a thousand, fifteen hundred, two, three thousand dollars a month to somebody saying, "Just wait, it's going to happen." For three years. Agreed. That's brutal. Because, because I, Dave and I, when we see you're throwing money in the toilet, we say, hey, let's throw it at least in a different toilet. Throw it in my toilet. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> what do we do instead? We spend our time building out our social channels. Yeah. And what did that do? That's probably why we went from third page to number three. Because we have a nice following on Twitter, Facebook. G plus all those places. But let me. Ask, did you did you use bots to build that up, or was it did, no, was this by it hand? All yeah. natural. Yeah. All natural. I we don't automate those kind of processes. Yeah. But again, see Terry, now you're 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 crossing over into the authority aspect. See, yeah, you know, you've built authority by all those different venues that you're that you're building in, and I think that you know we're seeing the. Google is leaning more and more towards authority. I think that they're going more and more towards uh, that in in lieu of links. I don't think links are ever going to go away, no. but I think they're taking a much smaller, uh, Im having a much smaller impact, and think that authority's impact is going to grow. Link links right. are important. Links will always be important. Um, if not for the ranking value that they provide, for the traffic they provide. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing you – go ahead, Steve. No, but that's always been our goal. When somebody comes on the forum and says, you know, I need, I need to get links, and it's like, well, okay, what do you want from those links, or should I pay for this link? It's like, well, I don't know. How much traffic are you going to get from that link? Well, I don't, I don't know. Well, let's, let's say, well, if you don't know how much traffic you're going to get for it, how do you know how much to pay for it? Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's one thing to to, to pay a, a random blogger five hundred bucks to write about you. It's a totally different thing to pay VentureBeat five thousand to be featured as an up and coming whatever. Sure. Not that VentureBeat would ever allow anybody to pay to be there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not that there's anything wrong with that. Or that or, <laughs> yeah. They don't use their publishing properties like that, Steve. Really? No, no, no. TechCrunch, of course not. Yeah, Mashable. None of those guys actually will let you pay to be there. But that's kind <laughs> of uh, for anybody. I think, and a lot of that comes from experience. Like we started, Steve, before search engines were a big part, like it is now. When we started, it was just another channel that we used with discussion groups and stuff like that, right? Yeah. It, 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 we were marketers, and that's most SEOs are marketers who learned webmasters. Like in the early days, we were webmasters who knew marketing. Right, right. And knew how to find the marketing channels. That's where our, uh, you know, our foundation is. It's in marketing, not in the actual, you know, saying, not, that's why we don't often, like, well, in my case, I can't speak for Steve, opt out for the automation, but I know Steve's coming around. <laughs> I mean, I, automation has its place. And automation is, is a wonderful thing for taking care of grunt work. Um, but there are areas where automation should be avoided. X rumor would be one of them. Yes. Um, you know, APIs are a wonderful thing. They, they make life easy. So we've uh, come up on an hour and like 40 minutes, I think, roughly. Uh, it, it's been a, a pleasure doing this. And I think we're going to have, uh, you know, build an audience here. And, uh, this is a lot of fun. Doing this uh, weekly. Uh, so if you didn't see us, but you're seeing the recording, know that uh, SEO Pro's helpline will be every Wednesday. Uh, I'll be here for sure, whether Steve and Aaron and Doc and some of the other friends here are going to join me. Well, they'll probably be a changing crowd. 
Thanks. Thanks, thanks for putting this on, Terry. It was a yeah, lot of fun. Yes, I can't, uh, you know, thanks. thank you. I, I, I came for the free chicken you promised, Terry. Yeah, what the hell? Yeah, it's in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a good discussion. Okay, uh, I hope everybody enjoyed it, and we'll see you soon. See and you remember, soon, Terry. SEO pros, Bye. Will, Bye. SEO pros will be open for business uh, starting next week. So uh, awesome. come around and see us. We're here to help the public find the people that they need to get their work done. So with that, final plug, adieu.